Throw it up, throw it up. Watch it all fall out. Throw it up, throw it up. That's how we ball out. Throw it up, throw it up. Watch it all fall out. Throw it up, throw it up. That's how we ball out. Strip clubs and dollar bills. So got more money. Where did the concept of the Legends Tournament spring from? When and where? Um. We're now in our third year um, of the British Airways Football Legends Invitational um, and it's actually going to be hosted on the 7th and 8th of June. Um, Barbados obviously is quite synonymous with cricket, being the home of several cricketing greats like Sir Gary Sobers, Sir Wes Hall, etc. And they ran a really successful programme called Chloe Cup where we had the legends from the cricketing world come out and play against South Africa, against England, against the West Indies, etc. So out of that concept, we then thought, OK, maybe we'll do something which is in football, because obviously in the UK, football is really the passion of the majority of the British people. And it was basically looking at that concept and just translating it into the football world. We obviously have great partnerships with people like the Professional Football Association, Footballers Association. And I was actually talking to a friend of mine, Mark Bright, who came out to Barbados and did um, coaching with the kids during our summer camp. And he put me in contact with the PFA. And from there, it started. They loved the idea. They saw how it could work. Barbados, obviously, is a really iconic destination. Loads of footballers already come out and visit Barbados on holiday. So it just was a natural progression for them to think, OK, well, we're actually going to give back to the country where we get to enjoy such amazing holidays um, and it's just transformed itself we got British Airways to come on board as a sponsor um, the National Sports Council in Barbados we actually support them as a charity and it's again about giving back to the game about investing into the young people of Barbados um, and you know the footballers have come out they have an amazing time they get to go out and train the kids the kids love it because here it is that they've seen these people on television and all of a sudden their sporting heroes are coming out and kicking a ball around with them on the pitch absolutely fantastic and again it's set against the backdrop of the Kensington Oval which is obviously the mecca for cricket in the Caribbean and it's quite interesting because you think cricket, Kensington Oval, when the guys walked onto the pitch, they felt the turf and they thought, oh my God, this is going to be fantastic to play cricket, oh, sorry, to play football on. And they really, really delivered in terms of wowing the fans there. So what can the supporters look forward to at this tournament, whether they fly into Barbados or wherever they're actually in Barbados themselves? What can they look forward to over those two days? Oh my gosh, they can look forward to two days of amazing football two days of camaraderie amongst the fans. The interesting thing is that even though most of these players are from the Premiership, um, ex-Premiership um, players, we've got people who come in from Canada, we've got people who come in from across the Caribbean. So it's a really um, amazing atmosphere where we've got the people with their tuck bands and their whistles blowing and people are so amazingly um, keen on their own teams. So even in the stands, you've got the Chelsea support saying, down with Man United, you know? And we put an interesting twist to it last year by introducing a Caribbean All-Stars team. So the idea was that we would incorporate some of the people who were from Barbados, Trinidad, Jamaica, etc., so that they could also get a feel and come back and play against the people that they had fought valiantly um, against on the pitch before. We've talked about cricket, obviously, but football is, is what the tournament's all about. Why is sport so important to people that live in Barbados, do you feel? Do you know what? If you live on an island where you've got amazing weather year-round, where you've got limited resources in terms of, you know, indoor stadiums and stuff like that, everybody is outdoors. Sport is what we do to have fun. You know, it's not um, the typical sit down in an armchair watching television society. It's not, we're all about getting outdoors, sharing experiences with people and everybody growing up in school, you know, even if we couldn't afford to buy a cricket ball, they would take tape and wrap it around. Um, we would take the old wheels from bicycles and run that for, um, I can't remember what it was called. Um, um, so, 
you know, as a child, sport was everything. That's what you did. We live on an island. It's hot all year round. Um, you've got no problems with safety. You know, kids enjoy their childhood through sport. Um, so we would, if we couldn't afford a cricket ball, we would sit down and tape up the ball and use that. We would carve our own bats out of a piece of wood, you know. Whatever it was, there was a makeshift sporting equipment. So um, I think that that's just carried on. And obviously, there's um, it's a fantastic way for people to come out of, um, you know, maybe a situation where they haven't got a lot of money. They see it as a way to actually progress themselves. Sport is also, think about the heroes that we've got. Sir Garfield Sobers, we've got Desmond Haynes, Joel Garner. And everybody, when they were growing up, aspired to be like Sir Gary Sobers. You know, they rolled up their collars like he did. They tried the Sir Gary Sobers walk. And really, not only was that a way of people becoming better themselves through um, mirroring their mentors, but also it was a way for people to stay disciplined um, and focused and really be committed. So sport will always be a big part of this society in Barbados. It will be a big, a big part of the pastime in Barbados. We talked about role models uh, in terms of cricket. I mean, obviously, Barbados now have Emerson Boyce, the winning captain yes. in the FA Cup final uh, on May the 15th. Do you see the day when more players come out of Barbados and end up in the Premier League, potentially? Well, that's exactly what we want to do. We've got a partnership with Chelsea at the minute where it's not just about buying the advertising assets, it's actually about them investing in coaching of kids in Barbados. Um, again, when you live in the Caribbean, you've got the amazing assets of the Sun Zen Sea, um, about being able to play at any time of the year. Um, and what we've done with that is actually brought in the talent from overseas who can actually really focus on developing the talent that we've got there. Um, not only are we coaching the kids, but we're also coaching the coaches because there has to be a legacy within the programme. So we're now in the third year with Chelsea as well, and that programme has expanded um, and we've got 45 coaches that have been coached by them and we've got over 120 kids. We also did um, a sponsorship with Derby and ultimately the idea is that, just like we do for cricket, that we'd like Barbados to be um, a destination for pre-season training for some of the Premiership clubs. So that's the, the thought in, at, at the minute. What's your own football allegiance? Because obviously you're around footballers. You're I'm a gooner. You're a gooner. Where did that, where did that uh, little story start? I just love Arsenal. I love their spirit. I love um, Arsene Wenger. I loved Thierry Henry. That's where it started, actually. But I just loved, you know, the Vera, um, Thierry, Gallus, Cole days. Um, very, very passionate about Arsenal. What has sport done for Barbados as a destination, do you feel? I think we're a small destination, we're 166 square miles, but we punch way above our weight when it comes to the sporting arena. And I think that we haven't just let it drop by the wayside, I think we continue to invest in the youth of today because that will ultimately be, you know, give us the visibility for tomorrow. Um, and I just think Barbados just is a natural backdrop for um, becoming a training ground, whether it's in the discipline of cricket or whether it's in the discipline of football, hockey or rugby. You know, we've got the natural assets there um, that will stand as well. So going back to the tournament, in terms of this year's Legends tournament, I would expect it to be highly competitive again, which I think surprises a lot of people, doesn't it? It's a highly competitive you know tournament. What? It's absolutely amazing that the level of competitiveness in these guys has not diminished whatsoever. I mean, you look at Gianfranco Zola running around on that pitch, he doesn't look as though he's left Chelsea, you know? And I think it's... The guys are all quite relaxed until they get on the pitch and they're like, that's my ball and you're not taking it from me. And the fans have been amazed. 
that they're still, first of all, they've kept themselves looking physically really well. And obviously, in terms of their fitness levels, it's been amazing. So um, the level of competition is just very, very high. And the guys really want to put on a show. They want people to come out and watch them as well. So we really um, would love to welcome, you know, loads of people into the Kensington Oval on the 7th and 8th of June. And final question for you. Would it be fair to say that sport will remain high on the agenda of the BTA? Absolutely, absolutely. We've got four pillars that we use to promote tourism because, again, you can't just talk about Sunset Sea destinations. There are loads of other countries out there which um, promote Sunset and Sea. In Barbados, it's the ethos of the Barbadian people. We're a very welcoming nation. The infrastructure's there. And... At the end of the day, it's not just about promoting Barbados as a leisure destination, but we've also got loads of niche niches that we focus on, and sport is one of those. Um, we've got, as I said before, the Legends tournament, we've got Chelsea doing their coaching, we've got the pre-season county training with the cricket teams, we've had six teams go out for the last three years, and again, we're looking to get into um, football and getting some of those teams to come out to Barbados to train as well. Down that pole, I still got my money. Four o'clock, I'm in going home.